Hello everyone and welcome back to another Batman Miniature Game 3rd Edition Battle Report. Today for you we have a 350 rep game between the Batman crew that does not feature Batman and the 350 rep Joker crew which features 3 Jokers. So that's a little bit confusing and playing on the table layout you see before you along with this brand new gigantic centerpiece which will be very difficult to fit in frame and will probably make filming a bit harder but also makes the table look better. So without further ado, let's take a look at the two teams. So as we look at the Joker crew that features three Jokers, it's also worth mentioning that Night Models have been updating a lot of miniatures in the Batman app. And Borgen the Cursed, over on the left there, is definitely the prime example of him, but uh, of, of the changes. But the Heath Ledger Joker has been changed quite dynamically. He's got a bunch of unique rules to him now that are lines from the movie. Lex Luthor for Organized Crime is Intel Support now. Some Bane minis got updated with a new rule to help score their cards, which they didn't really need, in my opinion, but hey, why not make them better? And some Penguin models got a similar rule, so you do have to be keeping up with the app. Uh, a full list of every change they've ever made would be greatly appreciated, honestly, because anyone coming in late will just be confused, especially if they have a printed card from a model that had a 3rd edition printed card. But I digress. Anyway... We have the three Jokers. They are all leaders, but you have to pick one to be the boss, and it is the criminal, who is this old bitter one here. Then we have the comedian and the clown. And the clown is with Gaggy here, who is a henchman, but he has some extra rules that attach him to this particular one of the three Jokers. We have Borg in the Curse, as I said. He's been given neurotropic drugs and clown paint, but his new rules give him desensitized, so his defense too isn't nearly as bad as it used to be. And he also has Mindless Monster, which the Joker victim, right at the back there, also has. Which means if they complete a move action and go after, or end up in base to base with the closest threat, they get a free attack action, which is pretty nice. Then we also have the new models, Joker's Paramilitary 1, 2 and 3 from left to right. The one in the middle with the machine gun uh, has extra ammunition. The one on the rocket launcher here is going to possibly be a threat. Uh, I think they can all start undercover. And if they don't attack in their turn, they have to effort because they are all bloodthirsty. That's kind of their disadvantage. I believe that's it. Because of so many guns, there's not much funding to play with. But it'll be interesting to see how the three Jokers perform, especially because each of them kind of serves a different purpose within a Joker crew. And they're all tough. They're all eight willpower, eight endurance, defense, and attack four. And if you take one of them down, one of them's got a hidden boss. So it'll be really interesting to see how this goes. And here is the Batman crew that is not featuring Batman, but we are seeing on the table for the first time the third edition Green Arrow, Green Arrow Rebirth, I think it's called, along with Black Canary Rebirth that will be leading this team. That's mostly kind of Year One themed, because we've got Year One Gordon, Detective Flash, who's from Year One, Merkel is from Year One, technically, GCPD Detective, that's kind of wherever, and Bullock is, he's, he's around. <laughs> so that is our, our quick rundown of the crew. In terms of upgrades, Green Arrow has been given his tactical gloves upgrade, so he has reinforced gloves. Uh, he also has a, a special rule where he has to pick an arrow upgrade per turn. He has four of them. You can only use one per game and uh, one per turn. Uh, sorry, you can only use one per turn and each one can only be used one per game. There we go. That's the correct way to say that. So we'll cover those as he uses them. Uh, Black Canary has hidden, so she'll be on the table somewhere along with the GCPD detective and Bullock. Gordon, despite being a lieutenant, has taken sergeant training and given it to himself and Flass. So they can use order to tell people to put down a suspect marker. You might be thinking, what's the point of giving it to Gordon? Because he has that new rule called coordination, where he can tell a cop to do an action, which is just a better version of order, because he, it doesn't need to be a suspect marker. It could be a shoe action or whatever. That way, he could also make some extra suspect markers go down via Black Canary or Green Arrow. That's why he's been given it. Uh, the detective has a radio. Uh, Flas has street training, I think. Or, or sorry, it's not called street training. I've forgotten offhand what it's called but it's the one that gives them undercover to start the round. And I think that's it. If anything else comes up regarding funding, we'll cover that once both teams are deployed. So we are all set up and good to go. The Batman crew is deployed to your left, eight inches in. Joker crew to your right, and it's the Joker crew taking first activation. They also have two more minis than Batman crew, so Batman crew has two passes. We'll have to do a little flyby on both sides of the table to show where everyone is. But first, let's cover objective cards placed into play during Phase 1 or Phase 2. There's a single one, it's a Phase 2 card, and it is the Psychopaths card for the Joker. Turn 1 isn't the ideal turn to get this played, but hey, why not? It might happen if both teams are particularly killy. Marker on it for every casualty, and uh, a different marker on it for every suspect marker placed by the enemy. 
if at the end of the turn there is more markers from casualties, it will score for a massive three. So, we can take a look at the Joker crew. Uh, his three paramilitary had undercover, but they didn't really use it that much. Paramilitary one deployed out of the deployment line just a little bit. The one with the machine gun is there. The one with the rocket launcher, though, is hanging back. There is an open window there. It might not be super obvious, maybe from this side, but you can see through that window there. Down here, we have the comedian with Borgin the Cursed. Then over here, we have the criminal with his uh, Joker's victim, and the comedian up here and Gaggy there, and the three Jokers have audacity, and so does this paramilitary here. Obviously, because it's Joker, Trickster, Chaos Agent, etc., the who has audacity is very fluid, but with the three Jokers on the table, it's pretty likely they're going to play using them. So they're just there to show intent, but that isn't set in stone. Anyway, uh, Black Canary used Hidden to come forward just a little bit, and has audacity. Couldn't come forward much further because of line of sight. Flast has Audacity is over here with Merkel. Then we have Green Arrow here with Audacity. We have Gordon. And then right over this end of the table, again, sort of using Hidden, but not very much. Undercover would have got the job done. Uh, oh, speaking of which, actually, Flask could be a little bit further forward to that corner because he has Undercover from his upgrade. But we have the GCP Detective and Bullock here. Bullock has Audacity. So yeah, I forgot that he could actually be right up, right up into that corner. He still needs to be within Inspire range and such but it could be a little bit further forward. So with that, one card in play, Joker Screw going first. On this table, let's see what's happening as the battle gets started. So this angle of the table is going to be very hard to get camera on, but it's worth it for how nice it looks. The comedian, uh, sorry, no, the clown, rather, of the three Jokers activated first. That's the goofiest looking of the, the three of them. He moved forward to his eight inches. Again, they all have the same base stat line. Into base to base contact with that sewer. He used his manipulate to put down a suspect marker that became a stinky fish. Do not have the card to hand, but then he made use of one of his abilities because he is all about manipulating the stinky fish and the teeth markers. So he used his roll called Poison Fish, special action. You pick a direction, roll 2d6, move the poison fish in that direction that many inches. Anyone it touches on its travels that have a endurance value less than the amount rolled is poisoned. So, he rolled a 9 and pointed it towards Bullock and the JCPD detective. 9 was exactly enough that it landed on them, so it's been awkwardly put underneath them, and has poisoned both of them. And there's the card there, just to show that it has indeed been put into play. Obviously now it's much easier for it to be uh, removed, but for one it will make their poison worse, and two might play into other cards later on. So we're sticking over there because the JCPD detective activated for the Batman crew and he used his radio to do a free inspired manipulate to remove the stinky fish. So that did a few things. Made his poison worse for one and then we'll cover the objective cards played in a second. But for his actual action he used a tactical action to shoot his pistol at the Joker. This Joker obviously. And rolled three sixes. He lost his strength die to shooting outside of effective range. But yeah, the basic hits all got through, so that's 3 blood, 3 stun to the clown. Now, for revealing the stinky fish, the Batman crew has scored a comb through everything just for revealing an enemy suspect marker, simple as. But the Joker's crew is all about counters and whatnot. And they countered with so long it's been a gas. The top criteria was met, an enemy model reveals a suspect marker, so then you must, uh, the opponent must pick one of their models and place an enemy suspect marker in contact with it. The enemy model being... Uh, the, when it says enemy it is referring to the opponent in this case because of it being the first criteria so down here by Black Canary there is now a suspect marker so we already have another one of the three jokers activating the criminal who is the boss currently activated he moved forwards not quite as fully inches into the middle of the street rather blatantly there although he is obviously flanked by uh, a couple of very dangerous guns <laughs> So he feels pretty safe. This guy himself actually has a very dangerous gun. He's got the same gun that the new 3rd edition Two-Face has. So it's pretty damaging if he gets the chance to fire it. He didn't fire it this turn though. He put down his suspect marker and it has turned into some exploding teeth via the Bite the Dust card. A 5 got rolled. Uh, the, the clown, I think, can force the counter down 1 with one of his specials. But he obviously won't be doing it this turn because he's already activated. But he likes manipulating the teeth just as much as the stinky fish. So we're sticking over this side of the table because the Batman crew used a pass, so paramilitary one, which is the guy without a gun, the one with the knife, who had been behind that tree there, activated. The criminal, now within range, gave him a free inspired manipulate. 
So he moved over here and then used that to put down a suspect marker and because the criminal has Chaos Agent, that gives all henchmen Trickster, so he was able to score, let them in on the joke for putting down that suspect marker. A friendly model with the Trickster trait places a suspect marker within four of an enemy model and then both uh, hands lose a card as well. Good old Officer Miracle, who definitely survives all of the times. Activate next for the Batman crew without Audacity but within 8 of Green Arrow. He moved up right to the edge of the table here and unfortunately couldn't put down a suspect marker or anything like that because of that one there. I did not think that through at all. Should definitely have been placed in front of her. But either way, you can see a 4 next to him and that is because he put Wait for Backup into play. You roll a d6, add 1 to it, pick a board edge, this edge, and if someone with the cop trait is selected, in this case Merkel is still alive and within four of that by the end of the counter hitting down to zero, it will score for two. So four activations from now, that will score for Merkel for two. And speaking of counters, the teeth should have moved twice. They moved two inches towards militia soldier, uh, paramilitary soldier rather, one and then five towards Merkel. So it kind of cut the tree line here and is now there and is down to a three. Bit of a passive activation for the Joker crew next, they used the Joker victim who doesn't have a Dasty so he just moved up his 8 inches. He was within 8 of the criminal there to get a free inspired manipulate but they have the stupid rule so they're incapable of doing manipulate so nothing for him to do there. He's just mindlessly charging down the street brandishing a butcher knife. Oh and once again forgot to cover where the teeth ended up, it moved 5 inches towards Joker's victim so it ended up basically back where it was prior to moving towards Merkel. Harvey Bullock activated next for the Batman crew which is going to make moving the teeth towards him very uh, complicated if it goes over the building, but we'll worry about that in a second. He shuffled sideways ever so slightly and then using the, the detective trait put down a suspect marker three inch, or you know, a couple of inches away from him and it's a snitch and I think the only person even relatively close is Gaggy who only moves eight inches and doesn't have a dash or anything like that so we'll not get within four of it I think. So it should be good to score and with that uh, you know what, let's see how far the teeth are moving live. Why not? They're only moving two, so it's fine. They'll basically be in base to base with the uh, the Joker's victim there. So Gengi did activate and just move forward his eight inches. He was out of Inspire range as well. He ended up roughly there. And the teeth would have moved towards him five inches. Not sure what to do when there's such a difference in elevation, because it would put it like roughly on the edge of the table there. So stopped it at the building edge and the teeth would explode doing one damage, one blood damage to Joker's victim and this paramilitary here which means it does score because it doesn't. this one doesn't have to hit an enemy if I remember correctly uh, if any model suffers damage, yep so that has scored and then at the ne end of the next activation wait for backup is going to score for the Batman crew alright it was time for the new Black Canary to activate and from where she was standing she actually has a gun and she has like the standard police gun so she used that on paramilitary Joker Thug 1, Pirate Goon, whatever, uh, but eventually they both ended up moving, which we'll cover as well right now. Uh, she moved up after shooting him, and then as a special action used Canary Cry, she also used the reverberation rule, which costs her one effort, which adds minus one special skill to hits, uh, targets hit by it, and push four. So that is why he ended up being pushed. But the initial damage from her blood stun pistol was converted to four stun via her playing a non-lethal ammo for two. But the canary cry itself does one blood. So pushed her away, or pushed him away rather, suffered one extra stun to make sure he was pushed away and moved up a little bit. Does expose her to a little bit of danger but she is an acrobat and she's pretty tough honestly. Oh and previously stated, thanks to Miracle, wait for backup has now also scored. So the final of the three Jokers activated, the Comedian moved up a little bit into base to base with that sewer marker as well, put down a suspect marker and it has also become a stinky fish because the other one's gone now, so there, there is a chance for it to score, so it is in play. He then made use of a special action he, call, he has called I Am Chaos. The Joker crew discards one objective card from hand and then for every enemy in line of sight within 8 inches of him you look at the opponent's hand and force a discard as well. Now in this case it was just one because uh, Black Canary was the only person within eight. But it might have made a difference because now they don't have the uh, secure the perimeter in hand that they were potentially aiming to score at the end of the turn. So it's just a little, uh, yet another way the Joker's crew can just cause that little bit of extra chaos and it's fun. 
So Green Arrow activated next for the Batman crew and he ended up over there but we have to cover how he works first of all. He has a rule called the Quiver which has four different arrow type of upgrades. He has to pick one per turn as I think I went over during the, the crew listing. And this turn he picked Rate of Fire plus two so that changes his one plus strength die to three plus strength die which is really good. He used uh, good aim for his special action so he can move and fire aim weapons because his all bows are mechanical and aim for the most part. I don't think there's any exceptions offhand, um, but also if he's firing at someone who has already activated in a turn, he can use another special action for free. So he used, pardon me while I quickly check what it was called again because I was blanking on it, rapid fire to get plus one as well. So he was up to four plus the strength die, but he moved, so he loses two of those. But still, rolling pretty good dice, he opted to pick on, if we come over here, Joker's victim, two arrows went right into his chest, Oliver doesn't mind doing blood damage and he already had one health on him, or one damage on him rather, and only has three health. So he is gone and as a result, scored a quick cheeky two points for I'm feeling weird. But that rate of fire arrow can't be used again. He has a hook arrow he can use for a grappling hook for one turn, one that adds knockdown and push I think. And the third one that I'm blanking on, I think it gives re-rolls, I, I don't quite remember, actually the card's right here, let's check, what was that third arrow? Grapple gun, stunned, it gives stunned to his ranged attacks, so if he goes early in a turn that might be useful. Borgin the Cursed activated next for the Joker crew, and I think I was accidentally calling the rule Unstoppable Monster when talking about him and the Joker's victim earlier, it's, it's not, that's a different rule, They're, they've got the rule called Mindless Monster, which is slightly different. If they do a move action towards the closest threat when they activate, which he did, he went to base to base with Black Canary, he gets to do a free attack action even though he didn't have Audacity, which is pretty good. Also drive by Dog Cameo. There we go. So, uh, along with being handy, heavy and having reach, his weapon now also has Devastating, so you roll two strength dice. The roll wasn't that great even with re-rolls. Uh, Black Canary's defense four. Oh yeah, they both efforted three times as well. But two hits still managed to get through to her, so it's a double blood axe. So she's taken four of her seven health, I believe. It was Detective Flass's turn to shine for the Batman crew. He walked around the corner right here, then used that order from the Sergeant Training upgrade to tell Black Canary he put down a suspect marker, even though the card that was planned to score from doing this is now no, no longer in the hand. Whatever, though. He then shot his gun. He was only shooting one bullet, but he shot it because of moving and firing. He was shooting at a Borgen who's defence too, so a pretty high chance of it going through and it did for one blood, one stun. Scoring just for an easy one point. They won't see me coming for inflicting damage on an enemy that couldn't see him at the start of his turn. So Joker's paramilitary 2, which was the one with the assault rifle that I keep on referring to as Militia, activated, moved down over here in order to get a shot on Black Canary because she is getting low on health. Um, she is an acrobat and she had just enough willpower to do two efforts. Uh, to, to do two dodges. Uh, his gun has assault, double blood and a red dot for a reroll so he can take a minus one and still fire full rate of fire but again lost two to dodge and he was needing fives and only managed to get one through but that is two more blood <laughs> putting Black Canary unfortunately new model on the table syndrome at one health remaining and also one willpower remaining. Last activation in the turn for the Batman crew was Year One Gordon without Audacity but close enough to Green Arrow that he had a free Inspired Manipulate because he is a henchman. He moved up 8 inches just behind the car there for relative cover in case he's about to get a rocket shot at his face and he put down a suspect marker mostly just to try and keep them ahead and also to try and guarantee that Psychopath's card will not score even if Black Canary manages to get taken out. I think it is over to that rocket launcher brute to end off the turn as well. I'm pretty sure he's the last one for the Joker crew. So we do indeed come to this paramilitary with the rocket launcher hiding in the building here, shooting through the window to end the turn. Now he did shoot at Gordon, but it's an expansive, uh, sorry, an explosive weapon, so rather than a rate of fire, it tells you how many templates to use. Um, but this Gordon has a bulletproof vest, which normally you deduct one from the number of dice being rolled against you. Presumably in this instance, because it's an explosive weapon, similar to an expansive weapon, it works how it would work if it was a Batman with bat armor. You don't lose all the dice the strength die just gets degraded to a normal die. That is presumably correct, it might be wrong, but that's how we've done it here, which means he did not need a 2 plus, he needed a 4 plus, because this Gordon is defense 4, and did not get it. So Gordon is unharmed, it would have been 3 blood had it hit. So with that, we're going to scoring for what had been quite a, quite a long battle round 1, but it's going to get quicker I imagine once people start dying. 
So at the end of battle round one, the JCPD detective has taken one additional blood damage from failing his poison roll. Bullock was fine, however, and everybody who has stun damage is healing one stun because they're all conscious, except the, the Joker's uh, victim who is dead. But we have some cards to cover. We'll start with the Batman crew because they have the most to cover. The snitch that was in play by Bullock scores for three, so that's done. Then they scored a stick to the plan for having the most suspect markers down. I believe they currently have, well, they've got the snitch up there, the one garden put down, plus two here, that's four, versus a stinky fish and a normal one. So yeah, four plays two. So that scored, and that let them draw into a secure the perimeter, which is also going to score. Because presumably that is allowed to be in that order. So these are going away now, but that secure the perimeter is scoring. If we come over here for the Joker's crew, the psychopath card, that's four versus one casualty, so it's discarded but the stinky fish that got put down by the comedian does score for two. They scored a lot more during the round, so it still probably works out pretty even. So with that, let's jump into battle round two. So here we are at the top of battle round two, and there's a couple of cards to cover, uh, well, a few in total. The Batman crew for phase one of turn two is playing their diehard card. Now the target for that, given that it can't be Green Arrow, is a little tough because everybody is potentially in danger where they are. It's risky, but it's being played on Merkel. It's being risky two times over because Merkel always dies. But yeah, it's being played on Merkel, which may end up being a, a mistake, but we'll see. For the Joker crew, we have another Psychopath card going into play. So, covered that already. And more importantly, let's dance. And specifically, it says leaders, psychics, and free agents, so it doesn't say boss, so all three of the Jokers fall under this card. If any of them take any damage from an enemy action, this will score, so it gives them a little bit of extra defense. The Batman crew is going first this round, though, which is just as well, because otherwise Black Canary is going to be dead after having only had one turn. They're going to have to do something with her, because she's not going to last. So Black Canary is going down fighting, and you'll notice that she's not there anymore, so we'll have to cover drive-by. We'll have to cover where she ended up. She started by using her special action Canary Cry with Reverberation, so the one stun she healed at the end of last turn was immediately used to give her push 4 and minus 1 to special skill. And the cone hit 4 people. It hit Borgen, pushed him back 4, 1 blood damage. Hit the criminal, did not damage him. This is also a good point to mention that the, the wording on the cycle rule has actually changed. And most Jokers, not all Jokers, I think the Heath Ledger one doesn't have Cycle, he's got true Psychopath now. Um, but most Jokers have the Cycle rule. It used to just say they couldn't have their Willpower Lord from anything. It's changed now to a minus two modifier on Willpower checks to make it easier for them to pass. Which in this case, bit them in the butt a little bit because it meant less stance didn't score because he passed it. So, nothing there. The two paramilitaries though, they both also got pushed back four each and took one blood each. She then ran away, and she can run pretty far, 12 base, or 13, I think, if you include the Acrobat bonus, which is usually uh, included on their stats now in the app, but not if you print out old cards. So, she ran all the way back there, you might be wondering why is she running back there, if she can't dodge, she'll just end up getting picked off again anyway. I'm trying to make sure she doesn't die within 8 of him, because if she dies within 8 of him, he gets a free Joker's victim, that basically brings back a zombie, and that would not be good for them. So Gangi was first up in battle round 2 for the Joker crew and he had been up there next to the clown of the three Jokers and also is a good time to remember didn't cover who has audacity in the, uh, in the opening phase of the turn. The three Jokers and Gangi are the ones who have it for the Joker crew. Green Arrow, Gordon, Flass and Black Canary have it for the Batman crew. Anyway so Gangi, he charged forwards, had just enough to get into base to base with the poor GCPD detective. This Gaggy has a double stun, electric, handy, mechanical, taser baton thing and he just jammed it into the side of the poor GCPD detective for uh, 6 stun damage, very much knocking him out. Gaggy efforted once, the detective did not effort at all, just for the record. So he is down, didn't score anything on it though, but now there's an unconscious poisoned police officer to not get a turn. So Green Arrow activated next for the Batman crew. He stayed where he was because he was shooting a target who hasn't activated yet in the form of the criminal up there. So he couldn't get a free special action and he wanted to use rapid fire for that extra ray of fire buff. So he couldn't do good aim. So he had to stay where he was. He used rapid fire, so that extra die thrown in. And from the quiver, he used the knockdown plus blunt two arrow. And he actually managed to get a crit on the strength die, so the blunt two applied. 
Two arrows got through into the criminal there for four blood, and again the blunt two managed to do that two extra stun on him. He is also knocked down, so that's going to impair his movement when he stands up during his turn. But it, on the downside, that obviously scores Let's Dance for the Joker crew because a leader was hurt. Hurt pretty bad, that's him on half health now. And it wouldn't be too bad getting rid of that one in particular when the cops start dying. Joker's paramilitary one activated without audacity but close enough to the conscious but on the ground boss. He moved up, put down his suspect marker and it has also become a stinky fish. So that's potentially going to score unless it gets removed but if it gets removed it will spread a little bit of that poisony goodness. Oh and forgot to mention the one stun is there because he didn't do an attack and he is bloodthirsty so he has to take an effort to not attack during his turn. So Gordon activated next and he did eventually move but from where he was he used his detective trait to remove the stinky fish. So it's not going to score but it does mean that he's poisoned but for the play it was to get the comb through everything scored however that was immediately countered with another so long it's been a gas for an enemy model revealing a friendly suspect marker and as a result of the second half of the, the text Black Canary has put down a suspect marker as is forced. Gordon retreated back here and he is also now Poisoned. Nothing else for him to do. So a bit of a weird angle for this one, but it was the clown of the three jokers who activated next, and he was there touching that sir graying where you can now see an explosive teeth marker with a one on it. He didn't actually go through a sir. Uh, he put down a suspect marker with his manipulate, his tactical action, rolled a d6 as is required, it got a one, and put into play the bite the dust card. However, he has a rule called explosive teeths, which should just be called explosive teeth, but you know. Uh, he has a roll called Explosive Teeth, let's say, and what that does is he's allowed to move the teeth wherever he wants within 4 inches of its current position, and then it reduces the counter on it by 1. It had a 1 on it, so presumably he's allowed to put it right next to his feet and then just giggle like a maniac as it counts down to 0 and explodes in his own face. So that's what he did. So that's going to instantly score. It is going to do 1 blood damage to him, but it's going to instantly score, and I don't see why that doesn't work right. Like It feels like that is correct. It doesn't say you can't reduce the counter to zero, so and the card damages uh, scores on damaging to enemies and to allies alike. So, and then he did a movement action and he retreated back here because he is a little bit low on health from the the gunshot wounds he took in turn one. So he's backed off back here. He's leaving Gaggy to it. Detective Flash activated next, and he decided to go and be all heroic because it's putting him in a lot of danger doing this. He moved up into base to base with the enemy suspect marker that had been there. He removed it. And he has the evidence tampering rule that Bullock has as well, so when he removes an enemy suspect marker, he can put a friendly one in base to base with it first, which he has done. But more importantly, measured it so he is just outside of six of Merkel there, so he meets the criteria for Bullock's card. Wrong place, kid. Review an enemy suspect marker at least six inches away from any of your models that have the cop trait, except the one that's actually doing the reveal. For a massive three points, so that was hopefully worth it, because now he is in a world of hurt. The Comedian activated from the three Jokers next. He moved down here, standing on the suspect marker that Flash just evidence tampered down, not doing anything with it. He smacked Flash upside the head with the crowbar. Blunt to heavy, devastating, probably one of the best double stun weapons in the game. Uh, the Jason Todd Rebirth version already uh, has that as well. I think those are the only two that have it currently. Either way, it's really good. And smacked Flash for six he would have knocked him down as well, but it doesn't matter because he's knocked out. He has six willpower. He then used a special action for one shot gun and shot Black Canary in the gullet. And she only she wasn't able to dodge because she has one willpower left. So she took the bullet to the face or the gut or whatever, not the spine, anything but the spine. And that is her gone. So that puts a, a mark on the psychopath's card, but didn't score anything else or, or do anything else. He just wanted to murder, honestly. Well, without Audacity, there wasn't much Bullock could do this turn, so he stayed where he was and just unloaded his pistol into poor Gaggy's back. Managed to get three bullets through for three blood, three stun. Uh, Gaggy is five willpower, four endurance, so he's one blood damage away from being killed, which might have been a good thing, actually, because that would have added to the Psychopath's card if he'd went down. Bogren the Cursed activated without Audacity, but he did a move into the closest threat, which means he gets to do that free attack with his double blood. Uh, super duper axe that we covered earlier. Didn't even count the bonus damage from uh, Flask being unconscious. Stopped counting at 10, because by then, stop stop, he's already dead. So that's another marker on the Psychopath's card, and another cop off the table. Suddenly the Batman numbers are dwindling. 
Yeah, so Merkel is the last activation already in Battle Round 2 for the Batman crew. He stayed where he was without Audacity, remember he is going to score that Die Hard if he lives to the end of a turn. But he shot his double stun shotgun into the Comedian and hit him twice for a total of four stun. Better than nothing, honestly, better than nothing. But now, uh, two of the paramilitaries and the criminal get to do whatever they want. So of those three, the paramilitary with the assault rifle moved up without audacity, but had that free inspire right there. Put down a assessment marker and it is a stinky fish. And it's going to score because <laughs> there's no one who can reveal it this turn, but we'll hold on to it and cover it and clean up either. Well, from his vantage point in that top right window, the final rocket, because it only gets two, shot out from between the rafters there, or whatever you call them, the bits of wood blocking the window, shot down here at Gordon, who was fully illuminated by that light there, and this time found its mark. So again, it was a normal die being rolled because of his build vest. That could be wrong, but that seems to be the way you should interpret it, but obviously don't know for sure. Either way, he's taken three damage. So we come to the criminal. He stood up and he came down here a little bit. He wanted to take some pot shots at Gordon as well. His Tommy gun is high caliber, so he loses the strength die last if he's shooting within optimal range, which he was. But all said and done, he did nothing to Gordon. He was rolling the strength die plus one other die. Strength die was a one, the other die was a three, and he is defense four, so no damage at all. Um, which is a little bit disappointing for them, but good for the Batman crew because they're losing people faster than you would like two turns into a four turn game. With that said, let's go to clean up and cover some scoring. So at the end of battle round two, Bullock failed his poison roll was taken one blood damage as a result, the others have passed. The GCPD detective has also woken up, so he's just knocked down, and everyone conscious has healed one stun. Cards in play, the diehard for the Batman crew scores, Merkel was totally fine. They have also managed to score in a phase four, another stick to the plan. I believe they currently have four suspect markers compared to three or two for the Joker crew. Oh no, it's two because the teeth exploded, yeah. For the Joker crew, swing of which, their other stinky fish scores for two. And for once, <laughs> here and anyway on this channel, Psychopaths has scored for a massive three. It was two place, uh, sorry, two kills via only one suspect marker placed in the turn. With that, let's jump into battle round three with things definitely speeding up. So here we are at the top of the penultimate turn, battle round three. The Joker crew is taking first activation. As unlikely as that sounds, they did manage to snatch it. They're also playing a phase two card. Some of you have heard this one before, they're putting these psychopaths into play. The three Jokers have audacity, so does the paramilitary with the knife. And then for the Batman crew, there's only five of them, so it's easier to say who doesn't have Audacity. It's the JCPD detective on the off chance gag he decides to take him out before he gets a turn. With that, we're ready to jump into it. So it was the criminal himself who got the turn started, and he did use his gun, but let me stop you right there before you point out his gun has reload on it. Yes, I know. Uh, there was a mistake noticed earlier in the last turn when he fired at Gordon. He has good aim as a special action, which he absolutely had no reason not to use, which would have given him plus one to the rolls. Don't remember what the roll was, fairly certain it would have resulted in a couple of hits, because didn't he roll a one and a three? So the three would have converted to a hit, I think. But either way, it wasn't fair that he didn't use good aim. Couldn't go back and undo that, because it was too long ago in the previous turn. So allowed him to fire this turn. Gordon still takes away dice, using his bulletproof vest uh, but still he shot his gun and as a result has done it's just a two blood one stun gun lots of hits through three hits for six blood four stun so gordon is dead but again this technically shouldn't be happening this way because he should be reloading this turn but he didn't shoot properly last turn dice were taken away as normal for moving i actually don't even remember if one got taken away for his bulletproof vest at this point but Good aim should have been used, and it wasn't, which wasn't fair. So this is to balance it out a little bit, but it's not the best, well, 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 in the situation I think it's the best way to do it, but not the most ideal, obviously, just something missed, but spotted it, just a little late, that's all. So, with Gordon getting murderized, oh, his um, observation roll that gives him plus one to his defense, that does not apply to ranged, incidentally, because it's plus one to defense rolls. But, he died while poisoned, so seasoning the mix is scoring, We'll see if a two point difference makes a difference to the final result and whether or not this is a bigger issue then, because if it doesn't make any difference, then who cares. Harvey Bullock activated for the Batman crew next and he finished where he started last turn. He shot the last of his ammo into Gaggy 
two hits, two blood, two stun. Poor old tiny, tiny diminutive Gaggy is gone. Then he used a special action to say, hey GCP detective, put down a suspect marker, which he did. And then he moved up there next to the pond behind the, the building here. Joker's paramilitary two activated, the one with the assault rifle, rather than shooting at Green Arrow who would simply acrobat the bullets away. He came down here, didn't have audacity, but used that free inspire from the criminal to put down a suspect marker and meet the criteria for another let them in on the joke. The score for another two points. The GCPD detective stood up, suffering impaired movement as a result, but moved forwards as best he could and using his radio, because Green Arrow is still on the table, put down a suspect marker and it has become a snitch that I don't think anyone is going to get to. But we'll see. So it's in play either way. Joker's paramilitary with the big, handy, heavy, sharp knife charged into Green Arrow but did not do well with his roll. Didn't effort either because of accumulated stun already. But did manage to get one hit through for one blood and one stun. The Green Arrow activated and this time from his quiver of arrows he chose the hook arrow which gives him the grapple gun for the turn. He used it and shot all the way down here into base to base with a sewer marker and a stinky fish that had been there. He revealed it, sadly resulting in poisoning himself, but did meet the scoring criteria for confusion for revealing an enemy suspect marker within 8 of the enemy deployment zone. He couldn't do anything else with his turn, it does put him in harm's way, but at this point, score what you can. Oh, and unfortunately that did not work out to be a good play because of the final, so long it's been a gas, has been played. So there is a friendly suspect marker down there now as well, but those two points have just been countered by these two points. So the clown activated who was in the middle of the street up there, he came down here and then used his short range mechanical acid flower, which is just a rate of fire 1 plus a strength die, on Green Arrow, but he acrobated it away with two dice, and again it's not an expansive weapon so he can do that. During his turn though, let them do their thing, it was played. The friendly suspect marker here had been selected, other side of the building had been selected open for a high roll, a 9 got rolled but it wasn't quite enough to put it on the other side to do damage, so sadly it has not scored and will just be discarded. Last activation of the turn for the Batman crew already was Merkel. He shot his shotgun into the Comedian again, did really well, did four stun from two hits. That puts the Comedian one stun away from actually being knocked out. But then he retreated over here for lack of anything better to do. Nothing to score on that, unfortunately. So of the three activations that the Joker crew has left, we're going to cover two of those real quick. The paramilitary with the rocket launcher that has no ammo left just came down the stairs there. Stopped at the bottom step. Borgin the Cursed, he moved into base to base with the closest threat so he got his free attack. They both efforted a full three times which for a green arrow is very dangerous now because any stun damage could be very bad, I think it would knock him out. Uh, all said and done though, it probably was the best thing to do in this situation because only one hit got through from Borgin, it was one of the strength dice for two blood. I'm saying all that utterly forgetting that the last person to go is the comedian and they have the crowbar, the best or one of the best double stun weapons in the game. One hit just needed to get through, didn't bother leaving the, the markers down, got them like four hits or something like that. Um, Green Arrow is very, very unconscious. And with that we can go into scoring. So at the end of the penultimate round, a disastrous thing has happened for the Batman crew. Green Arrow is not waking up from being knocked out. He will not be getting a turn, his game is over. He's just lying on the floor waiting to be murdered. Bullock and the GCPD detective passed their poison rolls. Uh, we have cards to cover though, the snitch in play scores, so there is that, there, this is going to be a very high scoring game for both sides. A stick to the plan, the final one I believe, has also scored for the Batman crew. And on the assumption that secure the perimeter can use multiple board edges, because it just says remove two friendly suspect markers within two inches of the board edge, implying to me it means the entire board edge, means that there are indeed two markers that can be removed from within two. This one, plus the one that Bullock put down in turn one I think, are within two, so they're both going to be gone, and that scores. The one card in play for the Joker crew was Psychopaths. There was only one casualty that turn, and two suspect markers put down, so it does not score. And with that, we can go into what will be a very quick final round, with very few bodies left who can do anything. Dawn of the final day, the final battle round, and it, it really is going to be super quick, because there's so few people left on the table for the Batman crew. Two of them, of the three that are conscious, they're not going to be able to be harassed by anybody because of where they are. We do have to cover some cards being played though real quick. Another Psychopath card. That might matter. Probably won't because there's a good chance that more suspect markers are going to be put down. But we'll see because I think Green Arrow is the only one who's likely to get murdered. 
But Showtime got played as well in Phase 1 by the Joker crew. And a 5 is the total result on the dice. Three suspect markers got sucked in around the criminal, so if he's still got at least one of them in base to base after five activations, which is it is going to happen, that will score for three, which is a big time score. Uh, with that, oh, the Batman crew is getting first activation though, so there is that. <laughs> Let's see what they can do. Well, a little awkward to get angle on, but the JCPD detective activated. He moved into the corner edge of the table there and put down a suspect marker outside of four or four. Oh, that shouldn't be a snitch anymore, but either way. He is outside of that and he's within two of the board edge. This, they're going for another secure the perimeter. It's the only thing he and Bullet can do in this game that will make any difference. So Borg and the Curse was the first one to activate for the Joker crew. He eviscerated Green Arrow into a fine paste on the floor. That's not even the full damage, that's just enough to show that he did the deed. Because he already had three damage on him. So Green Arrow is out of there. He did, he did well though. But unfortunately that does score for the Joker. He seasoning the mix. Now, we'll probably just quickly cover two activations that will affect scoring, and then that'll be it, because nothing else anyone is going to do is going to make a difference. So this is very hard to get angle on, but I assure you, uh, Bullet Cat Audacity, if we were to move it, it's over there. Into the corner there, then using the detective trait, has put a suspect marker right there, but kind of to the left of the tree, three inches in, just so it's very close to the board edge there, to set them up for the end of the round. So even though we still have Merkel down here in the corner and we still have all these people here, even if Merkel was to get murderized, it isn't going to do anything. It would even out the Psychopaths card, but it would not make it score. So we are just going to go to the final scoring after we take a look at Phase 4 cards. Secure the perimeter for those two suspect markers just put down. Scores for two for the Batman crew. The Psychopath score uh, card does not score because of the two suspect markers put down, as I previously mentioned. Showtime though, it will tick down to zero utterly unmolested for three points. I'm very curious who's won this one because both sides have done fantastically well from a scoring point of view but let's go see. So I think there's no denying that the Joker crew with the three Jokers have won the war but who's won the battle? Wait, other way around. I always do that. They won the battle in terms of like most of the Batman crew being dead. Who won the war in terms of who had the most points? I think maybe Batman's taking this and we'll see if the two victory points matter regarding what happened to Gordon. So, Batman crew first. 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 24, 5, 6, 7, 28, 29, 30, 32, 34, 36. Good grief. That is a lot higher than it usually works out in these games. 36 plays. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Batman Crew did actually comfortably take it with a difference of 6 points or 8 if you choose not to count the seasoning the mix that scored on Gordon but they were losing the fight on the table and that that should be obvious uh, could have been much worse if they hadn't stayed over there while the clown decided to come over here but the three jokers are super good they're really interesting and take a different play style to other like when you've got a single joker they each excel at something different and they're all dangerous in different ways we didn't even see the full like nonsense half of them are capable of would have helped obviously remembering this joker has good aim this this is the killy one with the good gun this is the one that influences objective types teeth and uh uh exploding uh, fish how could i forget fish of all things and then the other one is fantastic at combat because he's got one of the best double stun weapons in the game and he has that i am chaos rule which is just it's fun for denying scores but they did lose the new black canary she did fine she got piled on she was doing fine up till then. The new Green Arrow, bows in this game need a change, I, I do feel. Uh, that always hinders Green Arrows from being worth it because of the, the whole rate of fire one. They should have a rule, like, they should all have assault, basically. I know that might make them too good. They need something like that that maybe isn't quite as good as the assault rule to let them move at a minus one and still fire full rate of fire. They need something to be worth it, especially compared to how good guns are in this game. But either way, a Batman victory. We're probably going to use this table layout again because it's a very cool table layout. But uh, hopefully see some other stuff to try next time. Really interested in seeing the three Jokers again though. That, that was very interesting. Although we still have to retry the new Heath Ledger Joker with his changed rules. And his henchman got changed a bit as well, I think. 
But anyway, keep up to date with the changes on the app if you can. I know it's hard to because there's no full change log, just like the most recent three or four, which does need to change. Hopefully it will now that there's a Batman website specifically for the miniature game. That's the kind of thing they could put a massive, like full catalog of change logs in there. That'd be nice. Either way, thank you very much for watching. I sincerely hope you enjoyed. Apologies in advance for any mistakes, but obviously new miniatures on the table, so it'll happen. Oh yeah, I've totally, actually totally forgot to mention, new Borg in the curse with his his rebalanced rules in the app. Super dangerous and super good now. I was originally not going to include him and include Punchline to finally see Punchline on the table because she makes the Psychopath cards better and whatnot. And she's pretty dangerous in her own right because of her disguise sneak attack. But Borg in the curse is so good now. <laughs> Especially if you give him the neurotropic drug so he can dodge and has more movement. He is really, really good. But anyway, I digress. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Ta-ta for now.